Welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where we talk about all things early childhood education. I am Danielle and I teach 4K in Wisconsin. And I'm gonna share with you what we did in our fourth and final week of our science study. And we only did four weeks because at the end of that fourth week, we went back in person. And that's why we only had four weeks. So let's get started. So our focus question this week was who works with signs and then our last day was a celebration of signs which is not as exciting as it is when we're in person but we made it work all right so i'm going to share with you what we did during our large group what we did during our small groups and then i'll share with you our seesaw assignment and then the play and choice active activities so Monday, our large group, a question was who uses this sign? And it was a stop sign, but it had a, a handle on it. And um, we talked about why somebody might use that sign and hold the stop sign. We had um, some stop and go um, dance along. So kind of like freeze dance, which they love, which is why we do it so often. We talked about thinking about people who used the signs, especially the stop sign, because there was not just police officer that used that sign, there were crossing guards. And so we talked a little bit about signs and then we shared a few other signs that other people might use. And then we had a read aloud that was a construction book. It was a nonfiction that had a lot of uh, signs used in construction. So it wasn't actually reading, it was more just looking at the pictures and discussing what they saw and talking about what they thought the signs meant and what they were used for and who used them. And then for our small group that day, and actually both of our small groups that week, we had the kids wear their masks to our meeting and we had um, this little social story about transitioning back in person. And then the other day we, uh, the other day for small groups, we had the kids ask any questions, if they had any questions or concerns or share how they were feeling about coming back in person. So just to clarify too, I am currently teaching two different 4K classes. In the morning, I'm in person. And then in the afternoon, I am still teaching virtu virtually. Let me fix my shirt here. I'm still teaching virtually for the families that chose to keep their kids at home. So. And then on the Monday, our CESA activity, which is our CESA assignment, was they were to design their own sign. What shape will it be? What color? What is it informing people? Which was one of our vocabulary, vocabulary words. Um, maybe what is it advertising? And then we were asking them to be prepared to share it at our large group meeting on Thursday. Our play activities there was a recorded yoga of me that I was doing yoga they in their sign journal they drew pictures of someone who works with the sign and they could choose to make a play town instead of using homemade signs they pretended there were crossing guards and police officers stopping cars and telling them to go then there was also playing a game of I spy and using describing words with shapes, maybe number of sides, uh, rhyming words or starting with letter words instead of just saying, I spy something that is red, which is usually what kids this age. Sorry, I would have to edit that out. I'm tired. Um, and then the last choice was to make a sensory bin and fill it with all kinds of fun stuff to play with. On Tuesday, our large group, the question of the day was, do you know what letter this hand is making. So we talked about sign language and how people communicate with sign language and what they're doing to inform and talk and say with their hands. The movement was a Jack Hartman sign language video, a little kind of dance along video. And we talked about different ways to communicate. And we had a sign language book, but then we ended up just learning different animals in sign language. 
which I thought was really fun. And then the days to come, we added a few more and the kids were asking how to sign certain things. So I, I was very learning very quickly how to do those. Our seesaw activity assignment was to look at a chart that had the alphabet in um, sign language. And then they recorded a video of them signing their name using the letters of the alphabet. And their movement, their play activities, there was a dance along. There was a social emotional lesson. And I think that one was about um, joining in with play, which is not that great right now because we are virtual. But actually now that one of the classes is back in person, that, that part was helpful. Um, sing along to the more we get together while using sign language. So I recorded a video of myself signing that song and then the kids could sing along to it and i'll scoop back so you can see how it goes the more we get together 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 the more we get together the happier we'll be because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. <laughs> um, another play activity was play a board game with a family member. And the last one was have some animal races and slither like a snake, run on all fours like a cheetah, do a crab walk, walk like a bear. Um, just an activity to get them moving. A Wednesday, which is our asynchronous day, was about how signs are made. We had a video, we have an expert that recorded a video on how signs, how they make signs. Actually, a fellow teacher there, her dad makes signs. So she, they recorded a video and then the kids res were responding to what the order of the signs and how they were made, what was first, what was next, then, and finally. Uh, their play and choice activities, there was a yoga video, uh, there was a vi another video on how stop signs were made, which was very cool. Um, reading your favorite book and act it out or make puppets to retell the story. Their art was a texture art, so find things that had different textures and create rubbings with them. And play a game of fill your cup, which I shared a video of me actually playing that game which is you just take two cups or however many cups for how many people you have. You have a bunch of small objects, blocks or um, marbles, whatever you have at home, marshmallows. I had one kid play with marshmallows. You roll the dice and one or two dice, depending on what the kids are capable of, of doing. And then you kind of race to fill your cups. So, then on Thursday, our question of the day, what were, we, what were we talking about on Wednesdays? Oh, it was our celebration on, on Thursday, sorry. Did we answer all, your, answer all of your I wonder questions? So we revisit the I wonder questions that the kids asked at the beginning of the study. We checked them to make sure everybody was satisfied. We didn't have a read aloud because everybody shared their sign that they made on Monday. And that was fun. That was good to see all their different signs. The seesaw activity was, it was just share. Share what you learned about signs. Share something or one thing you learned about signs. Their play activities, there was a movement. It was go on a family walk or a family drive, hopefully a family walk, and look for signs and can you figure out what each one is and maybe on, go on a hunt for ones that you have not seen before. There was a social emotional lesson on joining in with play. There was a read aloud. I don't know what the read aloud was. I'm not sure. And then there was a math game that I recorded a video called, um, it was how many are missing. And so I show them how to play it and then they go off and play it with someone in their family. So I lay out five objects, they close their eyes and they open them and I've taken so many away and then they have to figure out how many are missing. And then I also told them too, that if you can do it with five, then do it with 10. And of course, putting five on top, five on bottom, like a 10s frame. Then on Friday, because we were transitioning back into person with a lot of our kids, we talked, the question was, do you have any questions about the changes coming for school? 
Um, we had, they, we had a vote on a book to read. I think it was one of the Pete the Cat ones and then a elephant and piggy and they got to vote on which one they wanted. And then we had a movement of get your body moving, which is a cuckoo kangaroo. The seesaw activity was, it was just silly. It had nothing to do with what we were doing. It was a photo booth that somebody in like the seesaw community shared and it was, um, you took a picture of yourself and then you drag and dropped the, these um, like hair and bald head and mustaches and glasses. And it was supposed to make you look like you were hundred years old. Oh, and then they had like little wrinkles and stuff. So that was what um, the kids did that day. And, it, and I shared it to the blog and the kids had a really fun time with it. Their movement that day for their play activities was a freeze dance. And then, then it was having a discussion with your families about transitioning back in person, talking about the safety and hand washing and everything that was going along with that. Um, there was an I read, you read, where they picked their favorite story and read with a partner and they switched off taking turns telling the story. So, you know, some people, depending on who you're reading with, could read the words and then you could tell the story by looking at the pictures. I do have a couple of readers, so they were they were able to read some of the pages too. There was a science experiment where you put candy into three different cups. It was water, vinegar, and what was the other one? Cold water, warm water, and vinegar and to see what happens to each of them. And then you can draw a picture of what you saw. And then the last one was using scissors and glue to cut up construction paper and just make a collage. And I, that's it. That is our sign study. I hope that was helpful. I, we are doing the ball study right now and let me know if you're interested in me recording what we're doing in the ball study. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos and I will see you next time. Have a happy day. You know what I was thinking? And maybe I'll ask you guys this. Is all my stuff too distracting because I was kind of watching back what I had just recorded and I saw all my craft stuff right there and I watched some videos of people and they have these beautiful backdrops and I'm like oh should I make something like that and then I asked my daughter who's 17 and very I don't know artistic and creative with those kinds of things and I said you know should we make something in this corner here so that it looks a little bit nicer when I'm recording my videos. So I don't know, does it really matter to you guys? I would love to hear what you think. Is it too distracting? Do you wanna see it again? Hold on, look. There's all my stuff. I mean, I can't move my craft stuff. So should I move my body and find a cool background? Um, I don't know. <laughs>